Hello, I'm Barbara Walters, and welcome to our program. Are you a secret soap opera watcher, a closet soap opera watcher? Well, you can open the closet and come on out, because Sammy Davis Jr. watches soap opera, so does Van Cliburn, Cal Burnett, Hank Aaron, Billie Jean King, and Betty Ford has just written a fan letter to one of the soap opera queens. And 20 million other men and women watch soap operas. We're examining the soap operas backstage all this week, and among our guests today is one of the top writers of the soap operas that you watch, and we'll find out just how it's put together. Soap operas, they're not for women only. Agnes Nixon has had at least one soap opera on the air for the past 20 years. The first one she wrote for was Search for Tomorrow, and she is considered the outstanding writer of soap operas. Her credits include Search for Tomorrow, As the World Turns, The Guiding Light, Another World, One Life to Live, and All My Children. She created and packaged both One Night, both One, one Night to Live. <laughs> wow, isn't that <laughs> my own? We'd like to that's have a, a nighttime very, Yeah, cereal. that's a very <laughs> short soap opera, One Night to Live. Has a very high rating, goes off the air at midnight. <laughs> she created and packaged both One Life to Live and All My Children, both of which are on ABC. Carrie O'Quinn is the co-publisher of Daily TV Serials magazine. It's one of 20 now devoted exclusively to soaps, and he also publishes the Daily TV newsletter. And this is a phenomenon that a great many people don't know about, that there are fan magazines just covering the activities of the soap opera, he soap opera Heroes and Heroines. The newsletter also gives a recap of what's happening on each of the 14 daytime serials. In case you happen to miss one, you can buy that and find out what happened yesterday or tomorrow. Jeff Young is producer of NBC's The Doctors, a Harvard Law School graduate and filmmaker. He was formerly a director of Another World and producer director of How to Survive a Marriage. Me. What do you find in the fan magazines? Are the most popular ones, the, the nicest ones, or the meanest ones? We've uh, been running a series for the last year, which has been extremely popular, called The Great Villainesses. Mm -hmm. They have uh, elicited a lot more mail and a lot more enthusiasm than the ones we run about the nice people. Those are, those are the Villains, fascinating. And villains and villainesses, not only on daytime serials, but in any kind of drama, are the ones that you have to protect the most and you have to be most careful about writing and acting. Why? Because if they're too obvious, then they're boring. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. the, the secret to a good villain or villainous is to make their motivations mysterious uh -huh. so that you never know whether Why they're acting. Why is she acting, doing that? Yeah. Or is she really doing that? Or is there a legitimate reason for it doing that? Yeah. Um, I, I, know all the if you do I them very, very simply, if you draw them straight black and white, then they're boring. I, I mean, don't disagree that you can't draw them straight black or white, but I think it's important for the audience to know exactly why the person is doing it, and then, and being, then saying, there but for the grace of God go I. We have a character on All My Children named Erica who does horrendous things. What does she do? Well, le well she's, her problem is that she felt abandoned as a child because her father left her mother and herself when she was at a very vulnerable age. Therefore, she needs a man. The minute a man loves her, the man is worth nothing anymore because he loves her. And she must be told 20 times a day, I love you, I love you, you're beautiful, you're beautiful. But everybody understands why. And though she works terrible havoc in the lives of others, she's the most miserable. And the audience understands that. And I think that it's because of that Mm. that they are more interested in her than if they didn't know why. Would Jerry and Betty Ford make good soap opera people? <laughs> <laughs> Is he well, too nice? I, I, I think he'd have to be the, you know, the good doc he'd doctor. He'd have to be wonderful. the doctor. He'd be Dr. Wonderful. <laughs> it's a little far removed from, I mean, as Jeff is saying, you have to have, the reason doctors and lawyers, I think, are often used is because they are people who can engage in their professional lives yeah. and still come in contact with personal problems. That's, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, the soaps are basically about personal problems and moral conflicts and decisions and things of that sort. 